start the clock. All right, guys. So, uh, when I'm not doing comedy, I work as a doctor for the NHS. <laughs> and I've always wanted to be a doctor. You know, as a kid, I used to make my grandparents wait six months to see me. <laughs> Every Christmas, I'd set up the game Operation and then cancel it on the day. <laughs> But there are lots of fun things about being a doctor. Uh, one of my favourite things is to watch TV medical dramas and point out all the little inaccuracies. Uh, like the way they have staff. <laughs> Talking in which, we've got any nurses here tonight? That's what it's like in hospital. Do you know what I mean? Because like, we do have some problems. Like, our technology is the worst in the world, right? So we had a cyber attack which shut down all our IT systems. Couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> I remember seeing it on the news on the morning it happened. They were like, computers won't turn on, A and E is in chaos, people having to print out x-rays. I remember thinking, oh, they fixed the printers. <laughs> People still have really strong expectations of healthcare. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at Facebook, where people write reviews about their local hospital. Because yeah. right, they're either like emotional five star or angry one star, and that's all they are. Apart from one review that I saw, uh, it was a little bit different, because it just said, very poignantly, saved my mother's life. Three stars. <laughs> Yeah, mum's alive, but the CPR was noisy, wasn't it? <laughs> like, sometimes I get jealous of doctors in the olden days. But I think being a doctor in the 1600s would have been the best job in the world, right? Because they hadn't discovered any medicine, but everyone still trusted you. You could just turn up at someone's bedside and be like, yep, that's the devil. <laughs> I'd be like, really? It happens every time she eats nuts. Um, that is the puffy head of a sinner. <laughs> yep. No, she should eat nothing but nuts. Uh, and, uh, if she dies, she was a witch. <laughs> but it is not like that now, right? There is a huge amount of pressure and scrutiny, and I am not a stranger to high pressure jobs. I used to work out a small waitrose in a large middle class area. Because <laughs> when we ran out of organic almond milk, <laughs> shit got real. Right? But no matter how bad things got on chilled goods, right, I had to fuck up fairly badly to kill someone. All right? And if I accidentally killed two or three people in one shift, They'd move me off yogurts. <laughs> I think one of the toughest things I have to do is break bad news, especially when kids are involved. Like when my granddad died, my niece was kind of too young to fully understand it. She just thought he'd gone somewhere. And she said to me, when I'm older and I have a house, can granddad come back and live with me? And that was heartbreaking to have to tell her, darling, you will never own property. <laughs> I think one of the most stressful places to be a doctor is on a plane. So at any moment, if someone shouts, is there a doctor on board, I have to go and help. By the way, little tip, uh, it's actually the quickest way to see a doctor in the UK. <laughs> and that only happens with actual medicine. Like, that never happens with alternative medicine. I've never seen a shout out being like, to someone with a knowledge of seeds, please make themselves known. <laughs> Because a man in the front row gets tired a lot. <laughs> I'm actually a very nervous flyer, which for me is interesting because that anxiety I feel as a passenger must be how patients feel when they come to hospital, right? which is why I don't want the NHS to go private. So I'd really worry about a Ryanair-style model of healthcare, <laughs> where you can see a doctor, you have to pay a little bit extra for him to wash his hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thomas Henry Michael, finalist number five. Henry Michael, ladies and gentlemen.